الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Tenth of Muharram. As to the innovation of Tenth of Muharram, some people remain thirsty in order to express their sorrow, hold gatherings, and commit acts which are patently innovations. Allah or His Messenger has not asked or allowed them to do so. Such acts were not performed by early Muslims or by the Prophet's family members. It was on this day that Allah granted martyrdom to Hussein radiallahu anhu, the Prophet's grandson, and the leader of the youth in paradise, and his family members. Allah humiliated the transgressors who inflicted these acts of injustice. Of course, it is a tragic event in the Muslim history. It was rather a calamity. However, it should be treated like any other tragedy. The practitioner of innovations, how? have, however, invented practices of all sorts. What is worse is that they have added reports slandering the companions who had nothing to do with the incident, this incident. Fatima Hussein's daughter reports it on the authority of his father that the Prophet ﷺ said, Man usiba bi musibatin fadakar usibatu fa laha if one is faced with some calamity, he should recite Inna lillahi wa inna We are from Allah and to Him we should return. If one recites the same as many times as he is reminded for suffering, Allah will, would reward him for each time as much as he did at the time when the calamity struck him. <clears throat> Hussein is the narrator of this report and is co communicated by Fatima, who herself was present at Kar Karbala. <clears throat> to, mem to commemorate a certain day or days of mourning is not sanctioned by Islam. Such, such practices were more common in the days of Jahiliyyah. By inventing such a practice, these people have deprived themselves of fasting on this particular day, though fasting on this day is in line with the Sharia. On the, other, on the one hand, the above practices have been invented by some, and on the other, their opponents have introduced some further new practices. For example, they take baths, shake hands, and spend more money on their household on this particular day, and they cite certain ahadith in order to indicate their stance. However, such ahadith are false and fabricated ones. The differences among Nawasib and Rawafid are well known. When Nawasib observed and the Rawafid more on 10th Muharram, they declare it as a day of celebration out of their spite of Rawafid. Both the groups are equally misguided and false in their innovations. Both of them are in error. Relatively speaking, Shiites are more guilty of lies. It does not, however, allow anyone to change Sharia, but out of one's enmity against evil. The practices of both Nawasib and Rawafid are equally undesirable. Satan intends that we be distracted from the right way once he succeeds in his plan. It is material for him which group is joined by the people as both ones are misguided. The month of Rajab, same holds for the true month of Rajab, it is one of the sacred months as this must approach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to invoke Allahumma barik lana fi shahra Rajabin wa sha'bana wa balighna Ramadana The Lord grant us blessing in the month of Rajab and Sha'ban and extend it to Ramadan There is no other authentic report regarding the superiority of this month Other reports to this effect are inauthentic the hadith which is not certainly proved as an authentic one may be used for the purpose of exhorting others. However, once it is proved that it's fabricated report, it should not be circulated in any case. It, if one recounts it, he should specify its nature. For the Prophet said, Man rawa anni hadithan wa huwa yura anahu kadib, thaw akhada fa huwa ahadun kadibin. One who reports hadith on my authority and regards it is as inauthentic, he is one of those who tell the lies. 
15th night of Sha'ban. Some applies to the 15th night of the month of Sha'ban. According to several reports, it is a blessed night. Some of the pious ancestors linked it with the special prayers. This is, however, objected by many leading scholars of earlier generations. Nonetheless, most of the scholars are inclined to the, to the view that it is a special night. The same way it is held by Imam Ahmad, yet fasting on this particular day has no sanction in Sharia. Rather, it is undesirable to do so. It is an act of innovation to celebrate it as a special day and to prepare special dishes. Likewise, assembling in a mosque at night and offering special prayers are also innovation. Sharia does not sanction that a gathering be held on a particular day with time, number and quantity specified for optional prayers. Funeral prayers for all the Muslims. Some people offer a special congregational prayer on the first night of Rajab, which is undesirable act. I have been told that in some villages, some people offer a special prayer after Maghrib prayer in the belief that its reward reaches their deceased parents. Some priests are in the habit of offering congregational prayers at night for all the dead Muslims. All these congregational prayers belong to the category of innovation. Hence, one should avoid this. Obviously, it is good to offer additional prayers at appointed hours. It is also permissible to perform additional prayers in congregation, yet it does not imply that additional prayers be prescribed and performed in the manner and one offers obligatory prayers. Congregation for additional prayers. One should not lose sight of the point that if, if gatherings are sometimes held for offering additional prayer, for listening to Quran, its recitation, and for the remembrance of Allah, it is a desirable act. For the Prophet, peace be upon him, did offer congressional pr additional prayer. It is also recorded that while the companions were engaged in reciting the Quran, the Prophet, peace be upon him, joined them and listened to the recitation. The companions used to recite the Quran whenever they assembled, and one of them recited while all others listened. There are several hadith regarding those engaged in teaching and reciting the Quran and in the remembrance of Allah. For example, the Prophet said, Those who recite and teach the Quran in mosques, divine mercy overtakes them and they are blessed with tranquility. Angels surround them and Allah mentions them in His court. Permissible forms of congregation, it is however not desirable to hold congregation at fixed dates or at regular intervals of weeks, months, of years. For in this case, the, these tends to resemble obligatory prayers, so Jummah and E prayers and Hajj gatherings. This distinction should be maintained. It is not proper to take a desirable thing as a matter of hobby and routine as long as it is not a regular feature and is held occasionally, it is permissible. This is the viewpoint of Imam Ahmed and other scholars in Kitab al-Adam. It is related by Abu Bakr Khalal on the authority of Ishaq ibn Masur that asked Imam Ahmed, it is undesirable if the people assemble and invoke Allah while raising their hands, he replied. It does not be worthy if they have not gathered together intentionally and do not make it a routine or regular feature. It is narrated by Marwazi that he asked Imam Ahmed, it, it, is it all right that people spend the night while when Israel sang the Quran and others listen to it and keep it on supplicating till dawn. He replied, I hope there is no harm in it. According to another report, Muhammad said, What else can be better than it is people gather together, offer prayers, and remind themselves of divine blessings as it was done by Ansar? Imam Ahmad al in the above replies to the incident narrated by Muhammad ibn Sirin before the Prophet Sallallahu arrived in Medina. The Ansar had mutual consultations regarding fixing a day for talking about the great divine blessing Islam bestowed on them. Some of them suggested that Saturday be fixed for it. This was objected to on the ground that the Jews looked upon it as a sacred day and it would be improper to imitate them. Next Sunday was proposed, but it was associated with the Christians. Eventually, they agreed on Friday. All of them assembled at the house of Abu Umama. Asad bin Zurara and the God was slaughtered with suffice everyone. Tartusi reports that he asked Imam Ahmed if people assemble and the Qur'an recites in a moving manner which makes them cry in the darkness of the night. It is alright to do so, he replied, if he recites in the matter of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, there is no harm in it. It is clear from Imam Ahmed's statement that it is perfectly alright to resemble for supplications. However, it should not be taken as a regular feature. 
Imam Ahmed and the place associated with the messengers. Imam Ahmed holds the same view about the visiting the places which are associated with the messengers. It is reported by Al-Khawatimi that we asked about him, a person who visited such places. In reply, he said, Ibn Umm Maktoum had requested the Prophet, peace be upon him, to visit his house and offer prayers there is so that he may pray at the same spot. In view of this hadith, it is undesirable that one may visit such places. However, the, mas the masses have gone to the extreme on this account. On the tour of Ahmed Imam Qasim, it is reported that Imam Ahmed was asked, what is your opinion about the one who visits al Medina or other such places? He referred to the above quoted hadith about Ibn Umm Maktoum and said Ibn Umar used to visit the, the places which were associated with the Prophet, peace be upon him. He was once found dropping water at a particular spot. When asked about it, he replied that he had seen the Prophet dropping water at that place, hence he was following in his footsteps. So there is no harm in such acts, however most people have gone to the extreme on this count. Even Masood's disciples, many ulama and religious figures of the ancestors entertained the same reservation where Abdullah ibn Masood's disciples made a place exclusive for their congressional worship. Ibn Masood once visited them and warned them severely, Are you more guided than the Prophet's companion or have you taken to the path of error? What accounts for it is that this, that has already prescribed the obligatory religious duties at appointed times and these are sufficient for his slaves. However, gathering at a fixed time is to resemble rather rival the gathering already prescribed by Allah. Undoubtedly there is much harm in such uh, practice, some of which have been discussed earlier. However, if an individual performs particular rituals of worship or a group of men occasionally does so, it is an altogether different matter. For in such instances, this practice cannot be confused with the Sunnah and Sharia. <coughs> the companion stance. This explains why the companions disapproved to fast only in the month of Ramadan, and this explains also why Omar felt that tree which people had been visiting in the mistaken belief that it was some blessed tree under which the Prophet, peace be upon him, had taken the oath of fealty. When Umar found people visiting the place where the Prophet had prayed as a shrine, he stopped them saying, Do you want to turn the place associated with the Prophet, peace be upon him, into mosques? When is the Sharia ruling changed? The government, the governing principle is that it is perfectly all right to offer additional prayer, either individually or collectively, as long as it is not, it is not prescribed in the matter of Juma, aid and obligatory prayers and are not offered at appointed time. Likewise, it is a permission to engage in reciting the Qur'an, supplications, the remembrance of Allah, individually or collectively, and in holy places. However, a different set of rules would be an operation if these are taken as Sunnah itself. The same ruling applies to all desirable act, acts. These acts turn into innovation if they are treated as an obligatory duty. These issues need further elaboration. However, we would not go to, into for details, our aim was to identify some innovations as to the acts which are already prohibited by Sharia. There is hardly any need to elaborate on them further, such as noise in mosques and intermingling of males and females, too much lightning, putting those praying into inconvenience. That these are to be avoided is common knowledge among Muslims. Chapter Innovations on Blessed Days Some people are apt to commit acts of Innovation on blessed days in both special and temporal sense, it makes their act all the more heinous in that they seem to transgress Sharia rules. An instance in a point in the, is the conduct of the day of Arafah. There is a difference of opinion among Muslims regarding its prohibition. Even then, the practitioners of innovation do not refrain from this evil. They assemble at the grave of a saint on that particular day and follow exactly the same path which is followed by the pilgrims for reaching Arafat. It is an innovation which is not authorized by Allah. It is a man-made ritual which has been set up as a rival to Hajj. Moreover, it tends to taking graves as places of gathering. Likewise, it is a forbidden thing to travel to Beit al-Maqdis with the intention to stay there as a pilgrimage to do at Arafah. It is a patent error. It is, of course, desirable to, be, to visit Beit al-Maqdis. However, it should not be done only for praying and dev devotional confinement there. 
The Beit al Maqdis is one of the three mosques of which it is permissible to undertake a journey. However, it is undesirable to visit it during the Hajj season, for it implies fixing a particular time for visiting it, whereas there is no special time for this purpose. And moreover, such a practice confuses it with Hajj, and Beit al Maqdis is set up as a rival to the Kaaba. Such as an act is an Islamic in that it is not endorsed by Sharia. For many visitors to Beit al-Maqdis circumambulate Sahara, shave their hairs, and perform the very same rituals there, which are specific and exclusive to Hajj alone. Similarly, it is undesirable to circumambulate the dome of Mount Jabal at Arafah. Musical instruments in Eid. It is undesirable to use musical instruments and wear silken clothes at Eid. It is not permission to do so on days other than Eid. Both the parts are equally reprehensible, abandoning Sunnah and practicing innovation. Eid should be celebrated in the same manner as it was done by earlier Muslims. One should offer prayer and give charity at Eid al-Fitr and sacrifice animal at Eid al-Adha. Some people lag behind in this acts prescribed by Syria. They are not alert in reciting takbir, some must address the sermons in only the males, excluding females. Though, though the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to address females as well, some Im- imams deliver sermons full of inanities. There are some persons who do not sacrifice animals inside the place of prayer while it is part of sunnah. Religion consists in performing all that is prescribed and preaching the same, including it also in abandoning all that is forbidden and dis- dissuading others from the same. This sunnah has been abandoned altogether. Females do not come out on Eid and do not join Jum'ah and Eid prayers. This is the face of the Prophet's practice as he took special measures to assure the presence of women on these occasions where once while Aisha was unable to perform, he took her to watch the congregation of the prayer. As she did not have clothes, he directed her to borrow these from her sister.